Hey everyone, it's Maribel Blue with a new Maribel Blue Unfiltered. We are talking about The Bachelorette. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Please consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the notification button. That way you will get updated on any new videos that I am posting. And if you are not new, welcome back. As you know, this is a channel with all different types of discussion of reality television as well as interviews. And if you look at the link in the bottom, you will see an interview that I did last week with a friend of mine, Andrew, who just started a wellness center called Caliper Wellness. We were talking about mental health awareness as well as beginning a new business and what that was like for him and the experiences that he had, as well as his education, which put him under a lot of stress getting his degree, but long and behold, congratulations to Andrew, he did. We are going to be talking about different mental health topics and to recognize that. And if you are located in the Florida area, I would suggest to go to caliperwellness.com, schedule an appointment with Andrew and see what happens. So I'm looking forward to having more of mental health awareness on this channel, as well as my new coaching channel, which I am planning on doing a video today after I post this video. I started a new channel. Um, nothing, <laughs> nothing original. It's just Coach Maribel Blue, whatever it is that you want to call me. Um, I would just prefer Maribel Blue because that's just the person that I am. So I felt like it was important for me to give back everything that I have learned and continue to learn in this process of what we call life and how we navigate through it, either through work, through relationships. So we are all not perfect. We all know that we all go through our issues in life, baggages, whatever it is that you want to call it. It's just really a matter of how we pull through the things that we are going through in a healthy manner and whatever healthy means to you. Unhealthy, of course, is things that you can hurt other people and hurt yourself. And that's not a good thing. I would suggest if you feel that way, you should contact a medical professional, not me, not your local tarot reader. And I'm, I'm laughing, but I'm being very, very serious when it comes to things like that. I don't play around. So you should always connect with a medical professional if you are having serious issues that goes beyond somebody who is like myself, just a, a regular life coach that can help you in that capacity. So I'm looking forward to all of these things, as well as one more announcement that I need to make. I will be switching platforms on the servebox.com store. And I'm really, really excited about it. I'm going to be featuring new products on this website, as well as just CBD. It's going to include a lot more stuff and also... Mm, I'm toying around with the idea of making some products subscription based. That way you can continue to receive your products without any interruptions. So there's a lot going on here that I'm really super excited about. And with all that being said, let's begin with The Bachelorette. We're talking about episodes five and six and what transpired between Logan and then episode six. We're just talking about the guys. We're going to keep this real super short because we all know that hometown date is coming up next week. Let's begin. Let's get into Logan because Logan doesn't appear in this episode, episode six. Episode five, he couldn't take it anymore. He had to share with Rachel what was going on. What was he feeling? He can't do this anymore. He can't pretend, even though he accepted the rose. Long and behold, he tells her, listen, I'm really not that into you for whatever the case be. Sure, you're a great woman. You're wonderful. You're this. And I can't believe that I'm even saying these words. Like, don't be condescending, Logan. You can't believe it. Like, just how you feel. This is what I hate about people who just don't express what it is that's going on in their head. Stop making excuses for 
what you are feeling. You are feeling what you're feeling. You're entitled to feel that way. But when you're saying it in a way like, I can't believe that I'm feeling this way. You're so beautiful. You're this, you're that, you're strong, you're powerful. That doesn't make anybody feel better. You're not into her. End of story. You went to Gabby. It's okay. Moving on. We all know that he had a conversation with Jesse about it. He goes and he tells Gabby, please give me a chance. This is the way I'm really feeling. I should have went for you in the first place, but I was feeling like this, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm talking fast because I'm trying to do everything as quick as possible. Long story short, he ends up being on Gabby's team. Woohoo! He gets in some makeout sessions, et cetera, et cetera. But here's the thing that that I, I wanted to include, okay? Because I know people were like, oh, well, you know, when this whole thing happened with the former hot guy, now the jerky Hayden, people were like, well, why did, why did Rachel just accept him? Like, why does she just not acknowledge that he said all of these things about Gabby? You know what? The heart wants what it wants. If a guy came out to you today and said, you know, I was really going after your friend, but I realized after a long time, it was you that I was really into and you had an attraction to him. As much as it sucks, if you're into that person, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, unless you're like a diehard, no, I don't do that to my friend, especially if you if he didn't do anything with your friend, who knows? It's really, it's really up to you and how you feel. So it shouldn't be a surprise that Gabby did the same thing. Remember, she kept her mouth shut when Rachel was telling her how they made out. She never told her that they also kissed. She never said that she had a connection with Logan. She just shut it down and said to herself, probably, this is what I'm thinking in my head, not that she's saying it out loud. Hey, you know, Rachel and Logan seem really into each other. So I'm just going to step aside and not pursue that. And apparently she was wrong. But that was because Logan thought that he could play both sides for as long as he could. He didn't think that at some point the women would take their power back and have everybody separated so that they can go on their own journeys. And there isn't this wishy-washy behavior of, well, I'm into you today, but I'm not into you tomorrow. That's really, really frustrating if you get my drift. <laughs> So moving on to episode six with Logan, he did participate in a group date, but long and behold, something happened. Now we're fast forwarding after this whipping group date. And I'm, I'm going to get into that in a minute. I just want to touch Logan and what happened. He participates in the group date. Everything went well. Now, if you remember the coming attractions, Jesse Palmer looked like he was talking to Logan and had made a comment about, this is not good. You may need to pack your bags and go home. What happened to that? Like all of a sudden it disappeared. And I'm thinking, well, in editing, like did they have Jesse Palmer come in and like make an announcement, like different announcements. And then when they decided to use whatever announcement that he decided to make, they just went with that one. I don't know anything about editing. I don't know what goes behind closed doors on the set of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Needless to say, Logan came down with COVID and we just never saw him again. Now, after this episode had aired, from what I understand, just kind of looking at other people's YouTubes and what it is that they're saying, and he put out an Instagram. It was great being there. And that was that. People are not going to get into details on social media because we are going to have the men tell all. So I can't wait for that. I can't wait to hear what he has to say and what happened. But that drove him out. And I'm not really believing that's what drove him out. As he came in and told the guys, oh, something happened with Logan and he's not coming back. He didn't even get into detail of what happened. Like, why didn't he tell them the truth? They were all exposed. Unless Logan went off the deep end and just, who knows? I'm not even going to get into it. Logan is out. Gabby has issues now. She is going through some emotions with Nate. Everything was going well. We all know Nate has a daughter, which he shared with Gabby early on in the episode. But of course, we all know when Jesse Palmer comes out of nowhere, we know something is going to happen. Jesse Palmer is with Gabby and Rachel, and he's talking to them about how is their journey going, kind of like catching up, because, you know, we got to throw Jesse in there. Let's not forget that he is the host of the show, so he has to be 
making appearances in one form or another, whether it's good or it's bad. And Gabby expressed that she had concerns about how she was going to move forward with Nate. Now, I knew this was going to happen at some point. I didn't think that Nate would end up being the final four. We all know that Gabby is going through a lot of internal issues and she's going through therapy with the relationship that she had with her mom and abandonment issues. And those are really serious issues. And she is doing the right thing. And she did the right thing by getting rid of Nate. I am going to stand my ground on how I feel about that. Of course, you know, I'm always going to bring up my friend from the Bronx. We, She and I, we talk about it week to week, everything that was going on. And she made a comment, well, if she knew she had a daughter, she's just going to have to get over it and whatever. Yes, I understand that. And nobody is ever prepared for parenthood. I'm not a parent, so I don't know what it's like. She is a parent, so she understands what it is to have children, to take care of them, to make sacrifices, etc. And if Gabby was not prepared to make any of those sacrifices, then she did the right thing, whether she's ready or not. The bottom line is, is that when you get involved with somebody who has children, you're not only getting involved with them, but you're also getting involved with their children. You are making a sacrifice to be a part of their lives. It's not just going to be your significant other. And you know what? At the age that I am, if I wanted to meet somebody my age, chances are they may have children. Their children may be young. Their children may be older. Who knows? But these are the things that I would have to take under consideration if I choose to get involved with somebody my age or older than me. And that's the reality of it. Gabby could not see herself with Nate. She had this tearful breakup with him. It was the only reason why she had the one-to-one. -one. Here's my other thing. Okay, you know I have to put my two cents in it. This is the reason why I do all of this. Why is it that you wasted a one-to-one -one with Nate to break it off with him? She had every opportunity. Our, let's, let's bring this up again. There are no rules. If she felt that Nate shouldn't move forward, why bother giving him a rose? Why bother having him at the rose ceremony? Wasn't the last rose given on a group date and then you waste more time? It's kind of like Logan. Like, how is this different from Logan? You're wasting time. You're giving roses to people that you don't want. Maybe you already knew people that you didn't want and didn't want to give them a rose like Spencer. Like why waste your time with Spencer when you knew that it wasn't going to happen anyway? How about just not give a rose if you don't want somebody? I could never be a bachelorette because I would just be so ruthless, mean and ruthless. But I, you know what? It's, it's not like I want to come off mean. I just want to be straightforward. I would want someone to be straightforward with me if they were not interested in pursuing a relationship with me and stop wasting my time. This is the way I view things. Don't waste people's time. Be, be sincere. Be honest about what it is that you're looking for. I think that People like to hold on to other people because in their head, they don't see that person moving on and being with somebody else because it's it breaks them or it hurts them. But yet you want to be with them. So it doesn't make any sense. At some point, you have to let go and figure out what it is that you want. Either you're going to want the person or you're not going to want the person. And in this situation with Gabby, she should have let go of Nate a long time ago. She should have never given him any roses. She should have never wasted time on a one-on-one -on -one date with somebody that she was going to break it off with. You should have broken off with that man before that group date and sent him home. But <laughs> here's the other tidbit that I found. Apparently, Nate is not such an honest person. In the last relationship that he had, apparently he kept his child a secret. And then he's just been using women. Now, of course, this is something that is 
just alleged the these these are the things that are going on in the tabloid right now it's not me making it up it's stuff that i read and who knows what he's going to say on the women tell all i will say this nate really took a lie to gabby right away like he it was almost like he was like a leech for him but that was his girl look at the group date when i think they were doing like the wedding dresses and those different pictures of the way he was running he was running like he was chasing after a bear <laughs> or maybe the bear was chasing him who knows let's move on to tino right quick in episode six tino felt he was doing everything in his power to make it right for rachel he was telling her everything that she wants to hear. I mean, if he's being sincere about it, right? On the group date, he won that cheese contest, yet didn't get a rose. I believe Avon got the rose. Now let's dive back a little bit into the Sean Lowe season. Now the Sean Lowe season I was blogging about and I did cheat. So I already knew who he was going to wind up with. But the whole time that it was happening, in the beginning, it was almost like weeks. Like she was on every, almost every group date. And I'm saying to myself, there has to be something wrong. Like how did she end up being the winner or the one that he chose to be with forever if he really wasn't spending a lot of time with her? And you know, sometimes that's the way it happens. Sometimes the person that's always on group dates that never really has a lot of one-to-ones or doesn't get the first impression rose, I can't remember if she did or not, sometimes ends up being the one. And who knows, maybe in Sean's mind, his process of elimination was, I'm gonna get to know every girl. She's probably the one, the ideal woman that I want to be with, but let me see what all of these other women have to offer in comparing her to Catherine, if that makes any sense. Like the other women, and he's comparing the other women to Catherine is what I'm trying to say. And every time that he got to know Catherine, he ended up picking. So maybe in Rachel's mind, because remember, Avon wasn't somebody that was like really in front of the cameras. That is the one that she really wants to be with, but she's feeling out all of the other guys and comparing those guys to Avon. Now, Tino got very, very upset that he did not get that group date rose. And he was bantering like a child. I did this. I did that. I proved all my points. It doesn't matter what it is that you do. Yes, I can understand it could be very, very frustrating for anybody when you're talking to somebody or you're dating somebody and things are going on a flow and then all of a sudden that flow ceases. And you're wondering, did I say something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Did I not capture something that they were trying to tell me? Did I miss something? And then you're afraid to ask because you don't want to get that person upset if they're already upset and not expressing those feelings. So in some ways, I understood Tino. Was he acting like a big baby? Yeah. At the same time, he was because he was saying he made all of these. He checked all the boxes. Okay, Tino. So you checked all the boxes, but you should know that you're going to get a rose anyway. Again, remember what I said from the beginning and a conversation that I was had, having with a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago. This is an enclosed environment. Look at the pictures they're taking. They're not taking it with cell phones. They're taking it with cameras and Polaroids, no less. So they don't have any real technology that they're using to basically look up anything. And to be honest with you, during filming, what it is that they're going to look up unless there's some kind of deep dive gossip site that they know about that I probably don't care for, where they're finding out information about the contestants. Now, on the one-to-one -one date with Zach and Rachel, and I'm just going to touch upon this just a little bit, Zach shared his issues with weight. Apparently, he was overweight. He lost weight. He's going to therapy, blah, 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 blah. She would be a great fit for the family, et cetera, et cetera. He gets a rose and that's that. He also admits that he's falling in love with her. 
while all of these guys, Tino and Zach, sound really great, I have a feeling, this is my prediction, I'm giving it now, while I'm in it, the last two standing will be Tyler and Avon. I don't think that Zach and Tino will last. Also, there was something in the coming attractions that captured my attention, and it seemed that with Tino's family, they were very judgmental. I guess they came they came across like aggressive. There was just something not right. And we've all seen in past Bachelor, Bachelorette, the family visits are normally the deciding factor on whether or not they would move on to the next phase of of the dates or whatever it is that you want to call it the relationship so here are my predictions for rachel which pretty much came true because this is what i said in my card okay rachel picked tino zach tyler and avon those were my predictions i'm sorry i didn't shoot a video but i was doing an interview and then with gabby i picked eric and the only reason why I picked Eric was because when I was looking for his picture, I had seen, now I could say it, I had seen that he was part of the final four that was in hometowns because they just actually captured an image. Jason, you know, he's such a cutie pie. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Nate. And then my toss up was between Johnny and Logan. Now, of course, episode six, we all saw what happened. She broke off with Nate. She and she did pick Jason. She did pick Eric. And she did pick Johnny. I didn't even put Spencer in the picture because I forgot about him. Sorry, Spencer, but you're kind of unforgettable. Now let's talk about the highlights with that date where they meet the group date, where they meet the mistress. I thought that was like one of the best dates ever. It was an experience that I think everybody should have. The reason why I say that everyone should have this experience because it is an experience of trust, not the experience of whether you want to have a fetish incorporated in your life or not. I think that sometimes people just find their fetish however it is that they find it. Remember, I interview a lot of people within the adult industry and most of the dominatrixes that I know are some of the most intelligent women that I have ever met in my life. So when it comes to a date like this, it totally makes sense. It's not really about the abuse of power, but the power exchange, the trust, what it is that you like, what it is that turns you on, what it is that turns you off. And they all experienced it, even blindfolded, whipping, the feathers. This was all part of an experience of how far they can go when it comes to trust. That's the way I look at these things. Not so much of like on a sexual level, oh, you know, who likes things kinky and and whatever because people are judgmental when it comes to this lifestyle they really don't understand it they don't have the education of when it comes to it they don't have the education of fetish they hear the word fetish they go to a, a different place and they make judgment calls on it without understanding how people like to incorporate these things into their bedroom and you know what at the end of the day it's nobody else's business it's your own this is a problem also with society. We all want to invade in other people's sexual life instead of just, why don't you just mind your own business and get your own sex life? <laughs> That's the way I look at it. So with all that being said, I am going to end this video because there's nothing more to say about what happened between episodes five and six. Just that here we are. I always say that this is really about chemistry. But I also say when it comes to these shows, they are limited in who they can talk to. Therefore, it creates an environment where you become infatuated fairly quickly. It isn't until the show is over, the taping is done, which we all know it's already done, whether the relationship survived. Look at Claire. Claire was into that guy. She couldn't see any other guy but that guy. And I can't remember his name. 
she ended up cutting her season short because she wanted to be with him and it didn't work out. She was infatuated quickly and then it all fell apart. Sometimes you have to know for sure what it is that you're looking for before you decide to settle down. Some people don't know what, it, what they're looking for and it just lands on their lap immediately. And there's one thing that I want to say before I close. There was a note that I made here for episode five. I said, vulnerability is important because this is like speed dating. And if anyone has ever done speed dating, you have a certain amount of time to ask questions before you make your choice on who it is that you want to be with. And that's what these shows are. I mean, it's two hours of watching time, but who knows what's going on after the editing is done? Who's spending time with who? What's going on off cameras? Are they allowed to see each other or not? It really is a matter of sacrifice and commitment. And if you're not ready to take that dive, to spend the rest of your life with one person and enjoy their company and have your love grow, then perhaps you need to step aside and let that person go. It's really nothing more to that. So with all that being said, this is Maribel Blues signing off. Let me know your comments down below of what it is that you think who Rachel and Gabby will end up being with. And until then, always remember, be good to yourself, be good to each other, and most importantly, take care of you. Bye, everybody.